Hi friends, in this lecture, let us see the learning tasks. This is the second learning task. Actually, I have done one video on the first learning task, pattern association. But now, this is the second learning task. I have left out there only. But after that, there are four more learning tasks. So, this is the second one, pattern recognition. So, coming to pattern recognition, how the pattern recognition can be done in neural networks. Let us see first how the pattern recognition will be done by the human beings. So, this is the introduction for this. Actually, human beings are very good at pattern recognition because we receive the data from the universe or we receive the data from the world because of our senses. As we have sensor organs, so based on the sensor organs, we will capture the most of the data from the world and we will save the data in our brains, in our neurons of the brains. So based on that, and we no need to put much effort on this pattern recognition. That means suppose if we have seen a person, in a, if we, we have seen a person and we have registered his features and everything in our brain such that yes this person is like this okay done but after 10 years after 20 years still we can able to identify that person so that is called pattern recognition and that is a great feature by the human beings so how this can happen so based on that we need to we need to do some programming for the neural net so that's what and this job has been done without any effort practically there is no effort there simply we can re recollect these things and we can simply say that yeah this person is that person or we, we know this person so same thing can happen so this is by the human beings since we got the information from the universe or we got the information from the world we have so much of data and that will that will be stored in our neurons of the brain Okay, that's the advantage of human beings. Now, let us see how the same thing will happen in the neural network. How we can reproduce the same in the neural networks. So, actually the practical, uh, the formal definition of pattern recognition is, it's a process whereby a received pattern is assigned to one of the prescribed number of classes. For example, I have seen a person and that person belongs to my village for example and now there are so many classes one class is my villagers and the second class is maybe some other villagers and the maybe the other class is my friends btech friends and mtech friends and esd friends so all these things maybe some uh, hyderabad friends bangalore friends like that so these are the different classifications out of which I can, by seeing his features, I can able to identify that he may be my villager, first point. After that, yes, definitely he is my villager. After that, definitely he is from that street. After that, definitely he is of that person. So, this type of practice is called pattern recognition. So, this, this is the formal definition of pattern recognition. It's the process whereby a received pattern is assigned to one of a prescribed number of classes. So already those classes have been defined. That means the classes have been categorized such that villagers, BTEC friends, MTEC friends or Hyderabad friends or Bangalore friends like that. It has been decided. That means it's a prescribed number of classes. Out of prescribed number of classes, after getting the data, you need to identify which class this data will go. That is called pattern recognition. And after identifying the formal definition, we can easily done the same thing. We can easily implement the same thing in neural network. Let us see how we can do it in neural networks. Yeah, this is the procedure. First, it should go. First, it should go. A training session first we need to train no first we need to train how we how we need to identify the prescribed classes we need to first we need to train the data 
So e here also we need to train the network such that we need to re repeatedly present the set of input patterns. So for example, I have hundred types of input patterns. We need to I so we need to keep on training the networks. We need to first send uh, 10, 10 input data and then 20 input data, 30, 40 like that. We keep on sending the data such that the network will be trained such that it will be classified. Okay. Along with the category to which each pattern belongs. For example, for example, if 10 people have come to my house and my dad introduced them as our villagers and maybe our BTEC friend may come and he told that he, he came with 10 people and he told that all these friends are our BTEC friends such that we need to train our, train the neural network such that the input pattern with their category along with the category and we need to train in that for example, I have 100 data sets and each, each set has to be classified and that data has to be given to the network such that the network will be trained accordingly and it will be classified. Same thing. Now, if I want to give a new pattern, then the network is able to identify the class of that particular pattern by the information extracted from the training data that has to be done based on the training data if any new information has come then based on the training data we can identify to which class the new information has to go that is called pattern recognition and this will be done in a in neural network in a beautiful way and let us see that part yeah this is the part what exactly happens here here input pattern is there and that input pattern will be passed through an unsupervised network for feature extraction. First, we need to extract the features and then we need to segregate or we need to classify to which, to which class the person will go. Okay, same thing will happen here. So the pattern, the Input pattern is X and that is given to the unsupervised network for feature extraction. For feature extraction, there is no need to compare anything. So, we can easily go ahead with unsupervised learning. That's sufficient for us. But for classification, I should have to compare the things. So, definitely I should have supervised network for this, for the operation and this operation is classified. And let us exactly see the things. I have m dimensional observation space. For example, one person has come and I, I have seen that person. So I need to identify to which category he has. I have seen him in my past and I need to identify that where I have to see at least. And this is m dimensional observation space. So after seeing him, I can recollect so many things, yeah, face, face, facial expressions and so many information I have received from his body language, his speaking, his walking and everything I have received and after that, I, these are the feature extraction after, out of so many features, he has n number of features, he has m dimensional observation space, he has m features, but for my identification or for my classification of that person, I can have a few things only. Those few things have been extracted to this middle middle oval and this one is Q dimensional feature space. Here I have extracted some features. Before that I have M dimensional observation space. So he has so many things, so many features for each and every part he has each feature out of them I can identify four or five. Maybe his eyes, maybe his nose or his walking style, his speaking styles, his interaction style and all these things I have taken some of them. That means Q dimensional feature space. Now I can conclude that Q is definitely less than M. M is very big features and out of them I can able to identify some features which are helpful for 
categorize that person. Now, with this, I can say x is now x is one feature and it is mapped to y. Okay, out of so many features, I have taken x mapped to y. Now, out, out of so many of these features, I can one feature is very good and that is sufficient for me to categorize that person. Now, with this y, I can simply say that this person belongs to my image. Okay, this is the main thing. Now, here there are only two operations has been done. Out of three things, two operations has been done. The first operation is feature extraction. The second operation is classification. So, the person is already having some features that is m dimensional observation space out of those m dimensional observation space that means out of those features i have extracted some features and those features are q dimensional feature space and out of them i can simply categorize that person into one of the classifications already in my brain so same operation has been done in the UDM. Okay, simple, very simple. Two things has to be remembered. Yeah, the things are two networks has to be used. One is for unsupervised learning and second one is supervised learning. Unsupervised learning is for feature extraction. Simply, no need to compare anything. Simply extract the features, that's all. And second one is for the classification. For classification, I need, I need to use supervised learning because it should have some comparison things so definitely i should go ahead with supervised learning and please remember all these things m dimensional observation space the features all contained by the map completely all features but i can extract some of them that is q q is obviously less than m and out of that i can categorize i can classify the that person to one of the R dimensional decision space that means maybe R may be 4 or 5 maybe R may be some number different number and out of them out of R I can able to identify one of them and I can simply categorize that person into that class so this is the complete explanation of pattern recognition so how the pattern recognition has been done in the human beings in the same way what is the definition of pattern recognition and then how it will be implemented in the neural network. If you explain all these things, the pattern recognition will be completed. So, thank you so much. Actually, the subscriptions are increased now and it is already crossed 1000. And if you like this video, please like it. If you want to share this video, please share with your friends and family. And if you haven't subscribed till date, Kindly subscribe now and please press the bell button so that so that I can whenever I upload any video you can able to see the videos and you will get the notifications and I like to complete the learning tasks within two days maybe two to three days and there are only three learning tasks left out and I will complete them also and thank you thank you very much for seeing this video.